In this video, we want to look at to create an account payables invoice. This is the invoice for our supplier. So I'm going to log in as Chandra Williams and let's click on sign in after entering the username and the password. So we're in the new news feed view, just in case you're wondering, this is a new view of the springboard. Yes, so we're gonna select payables and I'm going to select invoices. And I can see the dashboard. So various ways of creating an invoice, I can either go to recent and then select the create button or I can even go to my task list on the right hand side and select create invoice. I can also create invoices from a spreadsheet or even create recurring invoices. So I'm just going to create a manual invoice for now. Business unit will be the US one business unit and I'm going to select Lee supplies as a supplier. So by typing in the first few characters, I'm able to very quickly select the name of the supplier. The supplier number and the supplier site are automatically selected. And if you have more than one supplier site for your business unit, then you can select the preferred site or the site for the supplier's invoice from the drop down list. Legal entity is also automatically selected. Invoice group, if you're paying this within a group, I as a batch. So I'm going to select I'm going to select the invoice number field and enter my unique invoice number. So invoice number is 2018090001. So that's my invoice number. The system will check to see if there is a duplicate invoice number and will also place it on hold if it believes that the invoice is duplicated. So I'm going to enter the amount. The amount is 1971.00 and that value includes tax and the type of invoice is a standard invoice. There are different types of invoices you can enter, a prepayment, debit memo, credit memo, and also a withholding tax invoice. So I'm gonna enter details of my invoice. So I would just say that this is uh, consulting services consulting services that's that's what my invoice is for and you can enter details like invoice date payment terms which will be selected automatically based upon the supplier site and also the terms date and if this is requested by someone else you can also specify who the requester is you can attach the invoice if you've scanned it or if it comes in from the scanned solution, then it will be attached automatically. You can also enter a note uh, for the invoice. So you have other information like in the show more, you can view additional information like the uh, first party tax ID. You have other information like payment currency, um, if it's different to the invoice currency. And also, you can also enter things like goods received and invoice received, put in the dates as well. You've also got other information like accounting, for example, the distribution liability, which is our credit when we create the invoice. So we debit the expense, credit the distribution. So this is my liability account. And if it's a foreign currency invoice, you'll be able to see all the different conversion rates and types. And you've got other information like tax, if it's related to maybe any special tax creation, you'll be able to see the details there. And if you are using additional information, you'll be able to see information relating to additional information that you can enter. So I'm going to go to the lines. Now, if the invoice relates to a purchase order, you could have entered the PO number in the PO number field and then select match invoice lines and that will allow us to be able to match the invoice to the PO. So I'm gonna enter the item, the amount, which is 1800. And I'm going to select from my distribution set, which is a predetermined predetermined um, range of 
account per type of invoice. So I'm going to select contractor expense and that would distribute my invoice based upon the predefined um, accounting distribution that I've put in my set. So I've got other information like tax classification. Once we select tax calculation, that will populate this field. Have other information like the tax, which I've mentioned, uh, ship to location, any purchase order, if this relates to a purchase order. So you could also have PO number at the line level. You can track as asset if it's based, um, if it's an asset. So that means the account distribution would have to be uh, an asset clearing account and if it relates to a project you can enter the additional project information you can also enter additional details those of you from e-business background this is your dff or descriptive flex field so if you need to enter additional information you can enter those information in the details field so I've entered the basic information. Let me scroll down and you'll be able to see that this taxes information is, is here, but there's no taxes calculated. I'm going to calculate tax in a few minutes and you'll be able to see the calculation. Oh, there you go. It's already done the tax calculation for us um, just by clicking on this. And then you'll be able to see the details of the totals, the tax, and the amount and you can see the tax distributed based upon the state country uh, sorry state city and county and um, so rather than clicking on calculate tax just by opening up the tax region you're able to calculate tax based upon the defaults that we've entered in our tax spreadsheet so next we want to um, validate but before validating the invoice let me just take you through the manage installments very quickly so i'm going to click on manage installments and you can see the additional information for example your installments you've got your payment method um, and the bank account and then uh, any other additional details if there have been holds you'll be able to see the details of the holds in the holds region so there's no holds on this so discounts remittance messages any other information based upon the payment so the information in the installment is relating to a payment so i'm going to cancel and i'm going to go and click on validate so that will validate it will check to see information like the distribution um, see if there's any variance and if there's any holds that needs to be applied and for our invoice, everything looks okay. And it's validated. Account coding complete because it's checked the distributions for the account coding and it's now on paid. So let me click on distributions just to show you the distributions. So you can see the distribution. So that's the contractor expense default account combination. So let me just expand this a little bit so for you to see the details of that distribution. So you can see uh, company, line of business, contractor expense account, and the cost center that it relates to and all the other segments populated. So let's cancel. So that's my invoice created. Um, you have other information like the social icon. So if I wanted to start to put some information here, uh, say it was created by Chandra Williams, approval status is, is never approved to approved. And we can see some information. I can put some documents here, attach documents, stats relating this to social. So let me just say, uh, just put some information on this invoice for the New York contractor just to give some additional information and post so anyone looking at this information we know that this invoice relates to the New York contractor I can edit if I made a mistake and save so invoice for the New York contractor 
Um, what else? You've got information about who created the record, so you can see the about this record information there, and and you can um, initiate for approval if it requires approval or delete the invoice. So let's save and close. And that's how to create our invoice. So let's go home. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.